Well, happy Friday, guys. Welcome back to Bearham Engines. So, guys, before we kick off today, um, I just want to apologise to all the people that commented in the last video saying, it's not a decorating show, Lee. We're here to watch, um, watch you work on engines. Fair enough, but we can't just keep on going on about the, just the technical stuff or just the engines. Um, like I said to you before, the idea of this channel is to show everything that's going on in this building um, with our work. So yeah, I'm really sorry guys, but um, it was a bit like when we did this area here, although it's not finished, um, we like to show everything that's going on. And I think that the decorating the offices and building the office upstairs is a big part of it. So I'll just quickly show you where we are at the minute. The decorator is back in Monday and you can see there um, where he's sort of done the outline. Sorry about the flickering from the, from the lights. You can see in here, we've just put a, the desk down temporarily just so I can get back working. Three days without my, um, my office bench and I have had it really. So I've needed to do some invoicing. Um, but this is the color guys, a little bit dark. I'm sure a lot of you are gonna say you don't like that, but it's actually quite light. Um, and obviously with the desk in front of the window, I quite like it. So it looks a little bit more cozy than it did. Um, in a minute, we're gonna have the, obviously the two black tall cabinets to put all the stuff in and one lower one with a little plant and maybe the printer on it. So it'll look quite nice. And then the same in here, um, as I say, although it is dark paint, it's gonna look quite nice with the LED lights. We'll have a little sofa down there, etc. So yeah, it's all coming along guys, but it's a bit of a dump in here at the moment, as you can see, and with all the stuff out there that have got to go in the cabinets in the office, but there we go. Um, but anyway, I'm gonna move on from that. Sorry about that guys. So first thing today, the Cosworth engine. This is the one that had the, uh, what looked like a forklift that drove into it. I've repaired this now. So we've got a new standard inlet camshaft. Managed to sort out another pulley, which I had in stock. I've checked everything in there, all the bearing and that all fortunately was okay. Um, I have titivated the rocker cover, so that all looks pretty good now. There's a sort of mark here, but I've blended that in um, and that all looks very nice and sort of as it was before really. Timed it up, we put a new cam belt on it because the cam belt had a little split in it. Um, but everything else, guys, looks to be okay. So I've sent the customer the bill for the, for the parts, etc., and the carriage. Um, he's paid that more than happy with, with us turning it around fairly quickly. So that is going to be leaving here Monday. Um, save these old bits in the box there. So you've got the broken cam and the belt with the split in it. And all, of course that drastic pulley. So yeah, very annoying guys. Um, through here in the machine shop, I have got the Ingenium block on the hone. You can see I've done the first one. Now this one, um, I'm not sure what liner he's used. I'll have to have a look at the part number really and see what the size is if it's got a part number. Doesn't look like it's got one. Whether they've done these especially for the Ingenium, but the liners that I fitted in the last Ingenium weren't the same as these. Um, actually, if you peel out the original liner from the block, um, it looks like we've had to take like another 15,000. So they've basically made these about 15,000 bigger than the originals just to take it out. Well, that, they weren't the same size as I did originally. Um, but as I say, it looks to me like they've done them especially for the Ingenium because they're the right length. The ones I had before, I had to trim the bottoms off. So, which is handy. So I've took that one out there, guys, left the right interference. We've done the groove there for the top hat and I'm just on the second one. So we're chomping that out. The V6 block, so this one is faced. Um, we've just got to take some off the top of the pistons and I've started honing out the bore. Now there's about 18,000 to come out of this because there's a little bit of wear in there. Um, so it's the coarse stones are chomping that out nicely. It just saves me setting it up on the boring bar. But you can see we've got a bit of a Heath Robinson setup with the bar going through the mains, um, sitting on those, these two um, sort of, metal eye beams um, and then we just clamp it down onto that so yeah got to do what you got to do um, i'm just going to chomp them two out so hopefully i'm going to get this block complete today and we can get all this engine finished next week uh, 
very quickly, guys, I'm just going to tell you about this kit car. Um, because also, I do want to apologise because I've noticed two or three people have said, Lee, you talk too much. What that means, I don't know. I mean, I'm trying to run a YouTube channel. What, how I'm meant to do that without talking, I don't know. Or whether they mean I just babble on about crap that's irrelevant. But relevant to what? Anyway, I apologise. Uh, but first of all, I've been speaking to... Now, let me get this right. I think it's Northwest Prop Shafts. Um, and he has come up with a solution for the kit car, which is going to be a lot less work than we thought. So looking at this down there, and you can't see that because it's, uh, where is it? Just in there, there's a prop shaft donut. Now he says, make sure that that donut is in line with the diff, which I have, and it is. And he said to me, whichever end is in line with the donut so obviously the diff end he said what you want to do is make a prop but turn it around so what we've got at the moment is we've got the back that's in line from the diff to the donut we've got two uj joints one either side and we've got a sliding joint um, but he said that needs to be on the other end that is not in line so he's going to make a prop at the back with one uj and the front bit he said it's got to have a UJ either side and a slidey bit. Um, he said if you haven't got that, that's almost certainly what has done that. So obviously that first bit's got to be made longer as well, so we haven't got to run the spacer. But that's the plan. So we're going to work out exactly how much longer it's got to be, then we're going to send that to those, and they're going to make us a new one. So that's absolutely brilliant, guys. It means I haven't got to start readjusting where that um, donut has got to be. So there's that. We have got to remove this cover and take out the, uh, the bent shaft that is there. Um, I'm probably going to have to hack the end off that and pull it through because I've got another shaft to go in. Um, and then it's going to Tom to redesign that slave cylinder area. So it's not much good putting the slave cylinder back as it was because the pedal, there's no feel with the pedal. It's rubbish. You can't use it on the road. Um, so we're going to have to make some sort of leverage system to get more feel on that pedal um, and then hopefully it would be a lot better to at least pull off. So yeah, that's really all we've got to do with the kit car, guys. Um, but at the minute, I'm a bit tied up with the E30. So it's over at Stuart's at the minute. Um, Stuart's got to strip out all the bits um, off it. We've got to get it on a, basically a rolly pallet, get it on the trailer and get it up to Ryan. He's waiting for it now. He wanted it sort of Thursday, Friday. It's now Friday morning. Um, not sure whether it's going to be done today, but um, the very latest, it's going to be Monday, I would have thought, where I take it up there. So we're against the clock on that. I don't like to keep Ryan waiting, but it's one of those, isn't it? I can only go as fast as other people will work for me. So, um, so yeah, that's over there, guys. Isaac is on skimming head duty this morning. Um, this is about the third head he skimmed in a couple of hours. And... Um, we are still waiting for John to come back Monday to start grinding the cranks. We've got two gr cranks to grind for the Cozzies, one for Kyle, um, one for Peter over here. So I've just spoke with Peter on the phone. He sent in a load of Cozzy stuff, but what he actually wants is that block linered, put the oil jets in, um, board faced, tied it all up, ready to go. And then I've got to do a dummy build on that once John has ground the crank um, and see where we are with the piston tights, get all that basically sorted for him he's just sent the head in to check the compression ratio but the head's all been gone through so i should just clean that up for him and then uh, that one can go out the door guys but yeah as i say this week has been a bit manic i wasn't here tuesday isaac was on his own um, and we've got all this stuff laying about which is rather annoying so i need to get them offices done and let's get us back in action well guys just making another coffee it's five past four now and I've got to get this video out in about an hour. But just when I thought we couldn't make any more mess in here, we've made some more mess. So this, let me just show you, is the exhaust for the BMW. So we've got our upswept two and a half inch DTM tailpipes with a little 10 inch back box on the back, solid all the way down. And this is where the magic happens. So. Where the old fuel tank was, halfway down the car, or towards the rear, under the rear seats, we've utilised that space by putting two more 10-inch back boxes there. And then you've got the two vacuum valves there, which are electronically controlled in the middle. So 
even when the valves are open, they will part, the gases will partially go into the back boxes, but mainly straight through. So just for a bit of um, on-road lairiness, whenever we want. Flexi pipes there, and then go into the two manifolds, which it add on already. Tom's just modified them slightly. We shall obviously be wrapping them in the heat-proof wrap stuff. So yeah, absolutely top job done by Tom. Full stainless, lovely bit of kit. The engine, the engine's out. Obviously prop shaft, all those bits. Um, we're going to be sticking that on an engine stand. I've got to put the rear seal cover on. I've got to put the sump on properly. Um, check a few bits, obviously clean it up. It's a little bit dusty from where it's been down Tom's. But the BMW's in here. Why is it in here, you're asking? Because Stuart couldn't make it. He couldn't get it done in time. Ryan's on me back. So um, we've, we've had to go for it this afternoon, haven't we, mate? Yeah, strip down time, mate. Strip down time. Um, Ryan was meant to have it the beginning of this week, really. But he said, fortunately, he said, if you leave it till Thursday, um, because he's got to clean up, then that'd be ideal. But obviously now it's Friday, we still haven't got it to him. So I don't want to let him down for another day. Um, it was looking like Stuart couldn't get it done today because he's got a car stuck on the ramp with brakes seized on or something like that. So we're just taking it to bits ourselves. Yeah. So all this subframes off, you can see, obviously, um, the arms, suspension, brakes, hubs, all that we're not going to be using because we've got five stud stuff. So we're literally only going to be using the subframe. So we're going to get that to bits, um, get it cleaned and painted and what have you, blasted. Uh, wheels are surplus, um, as are the discs. So here's the car, guys. I've plonked the, uh, the steel wings on the front. And although they're only held on by some self-tappers, uh, they look a lot better fit with well, obviously their factory aren't they but you can see how thin the metal is here so obviously that's the problem with the fiberglass where it goes over the inner wing you've got trouble because of the thickness of fiberglass um, it's never going to fit right so as much as Mikey tried it ain't going to happen but you can see on the front although I've literally just threw them on how good the fitment's going to be so it's well worth the money um, although these wings are rocking horse poo it's well worth the money isn't it I think so, they do fit a lot better. We've got the they? steel bonnet, steel wings. Yeah. Um, although it's a fiberglass bumper, the bumper fits a lot better now with these wings. So, yeah, it's just going to make the car look overall more factory at the front. Obviously. Yeah, especially from the front, it will look well good. That's right, yeah. So, the over fenders, obviously, they're going to all be bonded on, blended in. So, they, you're not going to notice any difference between them and um, the original wings, really, for the M3. Same with the seat pillar kit and that. So really, it's going to look proper M3, isn't it? It is really, yeah. Pretty so much. So have a look, see what Tom's done here. He's put that brace bar at the front that goes down um, from A pillar to A pillar underneath the steering column there, which the old, see a lot of the old touring cars used to have. Down there is the, uh, the brace from the rear uh, cage there that goes at the diff, the front of the diff or the rear of the diff, whatever you call it bolts to um, to stop that thing twisting and um, so yeah really happy with what Tom's done yeah looks really good so what we've got to do is just take the seat out gear shifter handbrake all the rest steering column and that's pretty much it oh the rear we've got to take the rear subframe off but obviously we've got to get the diff out which means undoing those two bolts inside there now I've got to take the fuel tank out which is in the boot and that's it get it on the trailer Wipe arms. Um, Stuart's got a little pallet truck that he's, we can sort of strap it to, to get it on the trailer. But yeah, I'll be glad, I'm not, as much as I like seeing this car um, and seeing the progress, I'll be glad to see the back of it. We've got the offices in a million bits, um, stuff all over the place. So yeah, I'm a bit OCD with things like that. And this week has been a bit stressful really, because I hate it like this. Um, in the meantime, we haven't, had, we haven't been able to get a lot of work done. We've got an L200 bottom end in there, which we've got to sort. Um, got had a new cylinder head, so yeah, pretty busy guys. Glad to get this BMW out of here, but hopefully next week when we take it over to Ryan, we'll do a little bit of videoing, show on Ryan. Mm. Um, news, have you done a video yet on your channel, Isaac? I haven't. You gonna? Yes, I Telling am. Telling them the bad news. There'll be, there'll be a video out tonight. Video More out bad tonight. news. More bad news. Head over to Isaac's channel there. Bad yeah, news engines. 
it'll be telling you some more bad news. Yeah. There we go. Keeps us interesting. But thanks for watching, guys. Have a great weekend. We'll see you next week.